Hello YouTube, welcome back. Um, so today's video is on the topic of the volatility smile, which is kind of a, a slightly advanced topic for people uh, interested in options and derivatives. So um, hopefully you'll find this video useful. So the volatility smile is a long observed real life pattern where at the money options tend to have lower implied volatilities than in the money or out of the money options. And that's for puts or calls, um, it, it doesn't matter. So the pattern displays different characteristics for different markets and results from the probability of extreme moves. So essentially here, we're, we're seeing a pattern. This is not something that you'd expect based upon all the theory behind the Black-Scholes model. Because with the Black-Scholes model, um, it's essentially telling you that, that all options should have the same volatility simply because they, they are all based upon their options on a given underlying. And we'll say if we have two options, uh, they're both call options with different strikes on the same stock, you would say, well, that stock is gonna have a fixed level of volatility. It's gonna have whatever volatility it's gonna have. But each of these options that's pointing at that stock, it's, it doesn't seem reasonable to price one with higher volatility than another. So why is this happening? Well, yes, these different options are all based on the same underlying. So I, I totally get how at first it, it seems to make sense that they should have the same implied volatility, but they don't. And the reason that they don't is because of flaws in the Black-Scholes model. So let's take a quick look at it. Firstly, up on the screen right now, you'll be able to see a little graphic showing the smile. And it's it's called the volatility smile simply because it's the shape of a, you know, a smiling face, okay? So that is the volatility smile. And as you can see, their volatility increases as options become increasingly in the money or out of the money. So we've got in the money calls and out of the money puts or out of the money calls and in the money puts, all with higher volatility than the at the money uh, call and put options. So what's happening here? Well, it really just relates to this idea that we're pricing our options, our puts and calls, we're pricing them using the Black-Scholes or the binomial tree model. And there is an assumption in there that stock prices are log normally distributed. And as hopefully many of you know, stock prices are not actually log normally distributed. They tend to have fat tails. And so what does that mean? Well, I'll put a, a graphic up on the screen right now. Fat tail distribution is one in which extreme moves are more likely than in a, a normal distribution. So really what we're saying here is that very large up or down movements happen more in the stock market or in, in a lot of um, in, in a lot of risk markets than, than would be expected based upon a log normal distribution. So when those events happen more often, um, it, it's kind of wrong to price options assuming that the underlying is normally distributed. Now we do that, but then we find that we've got this smile and really it's just that people who are buying and selling these deep in the money or far out of the money options are essentially charging more for them because those moves are actually more likely than the model says they are. So let's take a quick look at the distribution. So a smile in options implies a distribution different to the standard normal distribution used in our models. And as such, it adjusts for one of the most commonly pointed out flaws in the model. And of course, this is when you hear people rage about the Black-Scholes model or, or about quantitative finance in general, a lot of what they start talking about are distributions as to how is the underlying distributed and, and is it reasonable to use the, the kind of things that we're using. So the volatility smile appeared in equity options after the crash of 1987 in the United States. And so essentially the, the 1987 crash showed traders and investors that markets actually can move a lot more than people thought they could. You know, it, it was the biggest move that had ever occurred. And people said, oh, you know, look at this. The, the market, um, you know, under normal circumstances, this would be expected never to be able to happen. It has now happened. And so people then had to readjust their thinking around risk. 
And so for different markets, the, the volatility smile will be different. So let's take a look at another thing we've got here, skew. And so skew is sort of the shape of a smile, but it's more off to one side. So what does that mean? Skew is essentially when options traders are pricing options and they're charging more for, um, for low strikes, so in the money calls, and they're charging maybe more, but not as much for high strikes. So we'll say out of the money calls. Um, and so, and of course that then pushes itself through to puts because of put call parity. So in, in equities, we usually have a skew, like you'll see on the screen right now. And we often see things like a smile in currency where it's, it's balanced on, on both sides. And if you look at my last video, which was on currency options, or at least one of the topics we covered was currency options, you'll see that with currency options, a, a put can very much be a call and a call can be a put. And so it's sort of hard to say which is in or out of the money. It really just depends on your perspective uh, as to whether it's a put or a call. So volatility in currencies behaves differently than in equities. Volatility on downward moves in a currency pair versus spot are priced in live trading options as being higher than spot volatility. Volatility on upward moves in a currency pair versus spot are priced in options as also being higher than spot volatility. And thus we get that smile rather than a skew. So the slide we have up now is this implied distribution. And what we can take away from smiles and skews and all sorts of things like that is essentially that if an underlying has a distribution that is different to the log normal distribution that we use in pricing, you're going to see uh, a smile or a skewer. You're going to see uh, some sort of different pricing for different strikes of options on the same underlying. And what that different pricing is doing is it's implying the distribution that is actually there versus the distribution that we're using in our pricing model. So there's many situations where you might expect to have quite a different distribution to, uh, to the log normal distribution that's being used. And thus you might see what look like quite strange uh, option prices, but they actually make total logical sense because the people buying and selling them uh, know what they're doing about and are making sensible decisions. So um, a good example of that would be, we'll say in a merger arb situation, right? If there's, if there's a company that's being bought out by another company, so company A is buying company B and they've offered $100. So a company A is paying $100 for all of the shares of company B and that's a trade that's gonna close in three months time. So you'd expect the price of company B to go almost to $100. Now it won't go all the way to $100. And the reason for that is because the deal could of course break and also because of uh, present valuing that, that a dollar in three months time is not worth the same as a dollar today. So it'll be below that, or at least it'll likely be below that. Um, now that will not be a normal distribution, right? Because the truth is the, li the likely event with that stock is that it'll creep up to $100 slowly over a three month period. But there is this big deal break risk where, you know, there's an awful lot of left tail risk where the deal could break. Now there's also maybe some right tail risk where potentially another company could come in and make a higher offer. They could say, well, actually this was too cheap a deal. We'll do 110 and so it could gap up 10%. So as you can imagine, that is not a normally distributed stock price and thus um, options on that underlying will, you know, all of the different strikes will have different, uh, different implied volatilities and it will really just relate to this underlying distribution. Now, if you need to read more about this, do take a look at the textbook where I've kind of spelled it out, I, I think in reasonable detail. So volatility, smile and skew can be thought of as a result of Black-Scholes-Merton model imperfection. So the Black-Scholes model assumes a certain kind of behavior of stock prices over time, that they move with geometrical Brownian motion, that they have uh, an expected return of mu and uh, uh, standard deviation uh, that, that's fixed over the life of the option. Now in the real world, that's not how stock prices behave. And so that has to be incorporated in this skew or smile. And so 
other thoughts on skew. So we can also think about skew as a measure of fear in the market. Now, a while ago, we talked about the VIX index and said that it was a measure of fear in the market, that implied volatility or expected volatility is obviously a measure of market risk. But skew can also be thought of that way because in, um, in a panicked market, you would expect that the kind of people who are selling options, they're already probably afraid of selling anymore or of selling options. And so they're going to mark up their prices. And of course, as they mark up the prices, that means that volatility goes up. And, and equally, there might be more uh, demand to buy those. So both of those fact, uh, effects, an increase in demand and a reduction in supply means that invo implied volatility goes way up. But in particular, the options they won't want to sell will be the, the out of the money ones or, or even the deep in the money ones. So essentially people won't want to be involved in that tail risk end of the market. So not only will you see implied volatility increase, but in particular, you'll see away from the money implied volatility increase. So what you're really seeing here is that not only has the standard deviation being used in the pricing of the option, so the implied volatility increased, but also the, the fat-tailed nature of the distribution has increased as well. So not only are people charging more for options because they think the standard deviation will be higher, but they're also charging more for particular options because they think the tail risk is higher. So if you look at the prices of different options, um, you, you, can, you can see uh, the implied volatility in them and you can see how that, uh, that skew or smile changes over time. Now, what else can we say about that? Well, when you're trading options combinations, and we did a whole series on options combinations, things like straddles, spreads, uh, you know, all, all these different options combinations, um, when, you, when you're trading something like a, an option spread, skew will be built into that, right? Because we have two different strikes of options, and so they'll actually be priced with di different implied volatility. So one of the ways of trading skew is actually to trade option spreads, okay? So we, we've always got a few things, you know, often, uh, I guess this is the thing with learning about derivatives. You learn a certain amount and you think you know a lot, and then, then we add a new thing and we say, and now you have to take that and bring it back to all of the other areas that we've talked about already. Already. So when you look at any, any trading strategy that involves buying more than one strike of a given option, you actually now have to start thinking about, about skew or, uh, or smile. And the same thing goes for things like butterflies. So why, why are people trading butterflies? One of them might be to take a view on the different implied volatilities that the three different options involved in, in building a butterfly um, are priced with. Um, hopefully that makes sense to you. So I've just put up on the screen there a Bloomberg screen grab. It's a few years old of uh, the volatility plot for S&P 500 options. And that, that's kind of what you see if you, if you call it up on Bloomberg. If you have a Bloomberg terminal, you can just type skew go in order to see uh, the, the smile or the skew on a given underlying. So that's where we are. Um, I'll probably do another video tomorrow where we're going to talk about the term structure of volatility, which is the volatility for different expirations of options. And we'll probably incorporate in that video also uh, the, the idea of the volatility surface. So tune in tomorrow for that one. Um, do hit the like button because you've made it almost 15 minutes into this video. And um, do subscribe if you'd like to see more like this. Um, you can buy the book if you want to. There's a link to it in the description below. Um, comment below equally if you have any questions. Have a great day and talk to you later. Bye.